Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? Welcome everybody. Uh, nice to see you here. Uh, just setting up, so uh, just trying to sort out the camera. <laughs> How's everything look? You can see my computer. It's the morning here, so uh, I can see I've got some bags under my eyes. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, Barry. Hello, Mark. I haven't seen you here for a while, Mark. Nice to see you. Hi, Mario and Chad, Connor, Michael, and another Michael, and another Mikey. <laughs> Um, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, we've got a nice show for you today. We've got um, some cool products to uh, to release, and uh, yeah, a quick look at some new releases that that have come out just recently. Uh, we also have um, a Sekiling, I think it's pronounced, uh, which is basically where we will give you a mystery product um, for a very low price. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. That's for airplanes. So any airplane enthusiasts, um, stay tuned because um, that's a pretty. They're going to be some pretty cool deals here uh, that you're going to want to stay stay tuned for. Unfortunately, I'm not a big expert on RC airplanes, and that's an understatement. Um, and uh, so I don't have a whole lot I can really share with you on the live stream about this. But uh, we are going to be showing you our new Futura from FMS. Um, which is a 64 millimeters um, sports jet, which is pretty cool. And I'm just going to show you show that to you, um, introduce it a little bit. But like I say, I'm not really expert, and um, and I, I probably will spend more time on car stuff. So if you're um, yeah, if you're kind of in one area, you're doing RC cars, or you're doing RC planes. Um, this might be a cool kind of start to start looking at the other one. You know, so um, we'll have a bit of both in today's show. Um, hi, Papa. Hi, Viking. Nice to see you guys. Hi, JD. Great to see you all. Um, regulars here. Hello, um, Hawaii. Um, aloha, brother. I'm from the big island of Hawaii. <laughs> My name is Dwayne. Uh, not Dwayne Johnson, right? Where, where's he from? Um, Mao? No. Yeah, is he Hawaiian? Um, I am um, I'm an RC airplane flyer. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, great to have you on the show. Hopefully, um, you know, we're not going to um bore you too much with uh with the rc cars but um hopefully you'll find them interesting too um hello from ohio hi from uh washington state and yeah great to see you all here we're ready to go um i'm gonna start first with the unboxing of the fj40 which is an awesome new um large scale rc from fms um licensed and uh, looking very very good we're going to have a close look at that and then we're going to be uh, looking at the futura we're going to be um then we've got two new mods which are basically where we've taken a um, an fms car and we've repainted it in our own style um, so we have a lot of different versions of uh, different cars uh, available on our on our website um, and so if you're looking for something a little bit special and maybe you're not so um, confident with your painting and things like that, um, these mods are a really cool thing to get something a little bit special. Um, so we're going to show you those. And I'm just going to introduce, first of all, the Sekiling. Um, we've got two Sekilings for airplanes. OK, so if you're here for that, um, wait no longer. Uh, we've got two. The first one is for 109 99 uh, dollars uh, and the second one is 189.99 dollars i believe and we need we're going to put the link for that in the chat box a few times during the show and uh, you can click on it we've got um minimum we've got a maximum of 50 of each kind um both of them are excellent deals um we're sending out a wide range of different types of, of planes for, the, for that, but all of them will be worth a lot more than what you pay for. Um, you can't choose, you won't be able to choose exactly uh, which plane you get. Okay, uh, it's, it's very random. Um, so if you've got a lot of our planes already, there is a risk that you might get something you've already got before. But, you know, these things make excellent gifts. You know, they're, they're cool for, uh, you know, in case you break something, and, you know, so, so they're really nice. And, um, and so we're going to put those links on our chat box. Please look out for those. And I'll try and look out for them too. 
I'm not sure when we're going to put them on, um, but if I see one, I'll let you guys know. Um, let's quickly go through the comments, and then we'll start on the FJ40. Um, I'm getting ready to get my first four-wheel drive, so I'm game. Very cool. Is that four-wheel drive? Um, that's RC or uh, a, a real four-wheel drive car? Um, Guniak, these scale cars are pretty dang cool. I think so, too. Hamels, uh, nice to see you here, Hamels. And I've lost your message. I just scrolled down. Ah, here we go. Uh, what two bodies are those under the K5 Blazers? You're already looking in the back. We've actually moved to a different studio today, um, which is quite nice because it's um, closer to home. Don't have to wake up quite so early for it and um, spend more time with my son at home. And uh, it's also closer to Starbucks. K5s are over here. Um, and there's two bodies under here. Ah, we've got a couple of, of painted ones. I'm not sure if these will be coming out. This is a kind of quite nice purple. It looks blue in, the, in my camera. Um, but it's actually um, a purple and white paint job um, with a white stripe down the front. It looks so blue in this camera. So strange. It's purple. And and there's another uh, red one. These paint jobs, um, you know, we do a lot of different paint jobs to see what um, what we like. You know, we'll choose some of them and some of them won't come out. So, um, yeah, we have a few of our mods along here. Some of them have come out and some of them haven't. So keep an eye on those. You might see some other stuff going on down there. Um, so, yeah. Um, the airplane link is up. We just put the airplane link um, at the, uh, I think it's uh, uh, pinned at the top. So you can click on that. That's the airplane link. Is that for both? That's for both um, secular links. You need to choose which one you want. It's, uh, there's 109.99 and there's also 189.99 versions. So uh, yeah, yeah, just select the one that you want. And uh, obviously the more expensive one will get you more expensive planes. Um, I haven't had a chance to take my four, uh, FJ40 out. It's been storming since it came in the mail. That must be so frustrating. <laughs> but um, yeah, they look great anyway. You know, put, keep them at home and they, they look awesome. Um, but yeah, yeah, of course, it would be nice to get them out. Um, and then what else have we got? Uh, what kind of thing is the mystery box? Car, air, or no info? So the mystery, in, the mystery box is airplanes. Okay, so bear, bear that in mind. Anybody who's not interested in airplanes, don't get the mystery box today. Uh, we'll have some other mystery boxes for you guys in the future. Um, but we've got some awesome airplanes at the moment for, uh, for the mystery box. Um, can it ship to Canada or is it US only? I think it's, it's US only, I'm afraid. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, maybe we'll do a, um, a Canada only one um, in the future. We do have a warehouse in Canada and we do ship products there. Um, but this one is for because we have a lot of certain planes in our US warehouse. Um, OK, so let's go. Let's go. So we've got our big box for today. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to need a knife. Ugh. This one up there. Okay, can you still see me? Hello. <laughs> um, all right, we are, uh, we've got this really, really big FMS box. Uh, this is a 110 scale car, and uh, half of this size, is, half of this box is, is actually the, the foam case that goes inside. But the, the 110 scale, uh, don't be fooled by that because uh, it's not really 110 scale, um, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger. It's more like one sixth scale. So any scale enthusiast, please just be aware that these are about one sixth scale. Okay, so they're not going to look all that good next to your one, your other one ten scales. It's going to kind of, um, they're going to be overshadowed by this massive beast. So um, this is actually the first advertised 110 scale from FMS. Uh, we've had two others recently, which were from Rock Hobby, which is uh, FMS's sister company. But this is the first actual FMS car, and it is fully licensed. You know, So some of the Rock Hobby stuff is, uh, is unlicensed. FMS tend to do licensed stuff. And um, here we go. Upside down, of course. Well done, Joe. Okay, it looks orange in my camera, but it's not. It's kind of uh, 
orangey yellow. This is very, very nice. Um, this is the Toyota FJ40. You can see it's official, officially licensed product. And um, it's, it says adventure at your fingertips. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice. You can see it's already, you know, it already looks gorgeous. Just looking at the box, you know it's gonna be cool, right? <clears throat> okay, we have a nice description here. I'm not gonna read. Um, because it's not that good, but it's interesting. Um, <laughs> it's got some nice uh, nice history about the product. Uh, basically, the, the, Toy uh, the Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 is uh, based, based on the Jeep. In fact, FJ, the J stands for Jeep. Um, and so this is a car that they got, um, they got from the, the Second World War. They found, they got the Jeep and then they kind of uh, reverse engineered it and uh, then built their own version uh, which was the Land Cruiser. And they had a series of these. And this FJ40 was released in uh, 1960. Um, so very, very nice. Let's open it up. You can see here, you get two versions. I will show you today. We have the yellow version, which I've got here. And we also have a blue version. Okay. Let's have a look. So it has different axles than the Atlas and Mashigan. I believe that everything is the same. Everything is exactly the same. I think the chassis is, is all the same. But we'll have a look at those axles in a minute. And I do have the Mashigan with me, so we can do a comparison. Okay. Now it opens on the long end, which makes getting it out quite a challenge but we're pros here and that was not that difficult at all. Okay, so we have a handle on this side so you can take it with you. That's gonna be pretty heavy if you're gonna do that, but, uh, but quite nice. It has the FMS logo on the handle. Um, here on this side, we've got three locks and we're just gonna snap those open. As you can see, the, the, the foam pack uh, box is extremely you know, protective of the car itself, as it should be for something as beautiful as this. <clears throat> okay, I hope they do a K5 on that chassis at some point and do a 110 smasher monster truck. You've got some good ideas. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely keep an eye on, on the channel. We're probably gonna announce some really cool stuff coming out over the next year. So keep an eye on that. Um, I have the Mashigan and use the 2S, but is 3S fine for it? I think the, the main issue with this would be the size. I don't know if you can get the 3S that's the right size to fit because it's, it is quite a squash. Um, and you need, it needs to be the right size to fit inside under the hood. Um, all right, so inside we've got our manual. FJ40. This is a nice big manual with all kinds of information that you would need. It tells you the size of the tires, of the wheels. It gives you all the measurements here, the wheelbase. Uh, anybody who's interested in the wheelbase, it's 339 millimeters. The approach angle is 65 degrees and the departure angle is 40 degrees. Um, the, the actual size, the whole size of the car itself is 571 millimeters. Um, from, from one side of the car to the other, um, it's 194 millimeters, and the height is 326 millimeters. Um, so pretty cool um, information. It's a very, very, very big car, and it's going to be a lot of fun driving. I'm going to just pull it out. But it's okay. I'm a little bit concerned when I pull it just in case it breaks, but it seems nice and strong. Nice. Okay. You just get out all the extra bits inside. Okay. I think I've got everything. Yeah. Okay. And let's put that down for now. Okay, there we go. So let's quickly look at what we've got here. It's a, quite a large stand-up um, transmitter. 
This is four channel. It's got channels three and four just there. And it flips open, it stays open once it's flipped. It doesn't go all the way up. Um, and then we've got some buttons for trim along here. And we've got just the kind of things that you might normally expect, steering and throttle reverse. We've got steering and throttle trim, uh, power button. Um, so we'll have a, another look at this a bit later. Okay, these are quite nice. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's got a little a hole for a lanyard so you can hang it from your neck, but it's a bit big to do that. But it's nice that you can stand up anyway. You can store it easily at home. Okay, Th that thing is beautiful. I absolutely agree because I've seen some smaller scale FJ40s before, but I think this might be the first 110 scale um, FJ40. And it's um, it's it looks so good. It looks so detailed and realistic. Uh, compared to the real versions um, that, yeah, I think it's probably the best FJ40 that I've seen uh, out of out of the different versions, you know, that, that have come out for, for RC. So it's nice that we're getting some, uh, you know, these ones, because I think we've had, we, you know, we, we get a lot of Jeeps and Land Rovers and things like that, but um, don't get a lot of these. So that's really nice. Um, running a Hobby Wing Fusion in my Mashkin, it dropped right in. Um, yeah, that's something you might want to want to look at. Um, definitely on my list, but also broke. Sorry about that, bargain bashers. Um, RC four wheel drive made a one ten scale. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So that's uh, correct my mistake. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, teenagers, mums everywhere giving the fold down benches the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> um, interesting print. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's uh, have a have a look at the uh, stuff that you get in the packet before we go on. I always forget this stuff. I forget to mention it. Okay, so we have some thing, some bits here to some uh, steps to screw on to the side. That will look quite nice. Um, I think it's good that it's optional because you don't always want them, um, but they're nice to uh, that you can put them on. Um, the the mirrors are not attached already. You need to attach them yourself. So that's these ones. I have got the blue one that I've got, which I'll show you later. It's already attached. So um, I'll show you. But this one just kind of goes in here. Where is it? There are the holes for that. Oh, yeah. So it's just in front of the door. And they kind of stick out diagonally like that, um, which is it's got quite a nice look. And then the actual mirrors themselves are these square or rectangular mirrors. Okay, then we've got um, the little uh, hex wrench and we've got some stickers for our license plates. So let's have a look. So we've got a choice of different locations for these. And I think these were chosen based on like um, the, where they were sold, where FJ40s were sold. Um, so we have one for for um, Japan, and we have another for Australia, Queensland. We have Montana, and I think that's all. Now, uh, the only thing that I would say is that it doesn't have both sides. It's only got one for the rear, and it doesn't have a sticker for the front. So yeah, it's a bit. Um, a bit disappointing, but um, yeah, let's um, not get too concerned with it. <laughs> so we have um, also some quite nice metallic stickers. I say stickers, I think they need glue to actually go on. So let me just put that and then I'll get myself out of the camera so you can see. Okay, quite nice. Metallic adds that extra layer that extra uh, bit of detail to the car which is quite nice and these ones go on the back and um if i remember correctly from fms's official video they kind of bend around the corner they kind of stick around the corner like that which has quite a nice look on it i think it goes on the other side but um yeah quite nice so um, let's quickly go back through some of the 
the comments. Um, okay, I received my CHPK5 today. Hope you enjoy it. Is the suspension on this one a lot softer than the mash again? Uh, Quinn hasn't actually uh, seen the, the FJ40. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Papa has seen it. I'm not sure if Papa has got the mash again itself. But um, I think I've seen some videos where they said that the, the suspension, oh, what is that? I've got some foam in the front. The suspension is a little bit softer, but quite similar, I would say. I will get both of them out later so you can have a, you know, you can compare them. Um, but it's got, I, I think it's got quite a nice realistic role to it. Um, but the actual performance of the shocks, you know, you may want to, to get some that have a bit more dampening on them. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, the suspension is wobbly yeah, a little bit, um, super cool looking on the trails. Yeah. I think it looks awesome. I've seen, uh, so the shop mini RC has, uh, has received one as well. And I've seen a short from you. I'm not sure if you've released your deep dive yet, um, but um, looking forward to that. And um, it's very realistic indeed. It will make for nice scale filming. So let's talk a little bit about those realistic details now. Okay, so uh, this is something I think is the best selling point of this car is just how awesome and scale it looks. And I'm just going to show you some of those features. Um, but while I do, I'm just going to kind of talk and ramble on a little bit about what year this model actually is, because it frustrates me <laughs> a little bit that um, FMS, don't, they make this beautiful scale model, but they don't tell us what year it is or even what decade it is, because of course the FJ40, it came out in 1960 and it carried on until 1983 or 84. Um, and so there's, you know, it's quite a large span of time. So which, which actual version is that? Of course, it didn't change a whole lot, but, um, but it did change some. So, and I say it frustrates me, but actually I realized that I actually really enjoy um, trying to do some detective work of my own and figure out what year this model is. So let's have a, have a look and uh, we'll see some of the details on that. Um, so, so the first thing is, um, yeah, I've got, so I've got some of my dates, so I just don't wanna get my dates wrong. So I actually wrote some down. Um, okay, so, so one really um, important detail here is if you look inside, I don't know if you can see through that window. So I'm gonna open the door. So the door handle actually I don't want to break it. It pulls down and then, it, oh, I've got a sticker on it. Okay, there we go. It's got stickers all over the doors. Um, and then it pulls open. And have a look inside. And apart from the back, don't worry about the back stuff at the moment, but you can see that there are two bucket seats. Okay, so the, um, the first FJ40s actually had a bench seat, which went, um, there was a, I think at first it was all the way across just one bench and then it was a 60 40 split and then finally they had two bucket seats and the bucket seats were released in um, 1973 so we know that this version is no um, no older than 1973 okay so that's on one side and then on the other side um, if we look at the back one of the key features of this is we can see this openable Again, I don't want to break it. It's have stickers. Yeah, it's got stickers. Be careful with those. Okay, they are pretty sticky. And I'll try and get them off. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so these doors, as I was saying, these doors are, um, you can see it, it lifts up at the top and then it, the tailgate opens 
like uh, kind of window doors. Um, so it opens on both sides. Um, later versions of this car have ambulance doors. So they, um, they just open down the middle. Um, and the, the, the ambulance doors came out in 1977. So we know that the, this one is no older than 1977. Pull it open. There we go. Okay, and it's got a lot of padding in here. This is, I think, to keep the seats down. Um, let's get these open. So yeah, these are quite nice little doors. You know, three. They open in three directions. They they'd be great for mounting a, a tire on somewhere as well. And uh, these seats inside actually fold down. Um, somehow, let's see, I'm not going to break it, but um, yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so these, um, these doors came out in 1970, uh, so the ambulance doors came out in 1977, so we know that the model is no older than 1977, and I love these curved windows as well on the corners, that's really cool. Okay, and let's look at some other details. Uh, okay, so um, besides that, if we open it up, we can have a look directly into the middle. This roof comes off, actually. Um, not that it would normally come off, but it's a good way to see inside the vehicle if you want to. Um, this, you can see in here that there are no, there's no roll cage. So there was a roll cage for this, which became standard in 1974. So there's no roll cage in here, so it's no older than 1974. <clears throat> okay, the seats do fold up. Um, yeah, cabaret, they do fold up, but um, I'm not, it's the first time, and I don't want to spend all the time trying to figure it out, um, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. <laughs> um, okay, other details for this is um, um, in 1976, uh, there was some, uh, there was a divide here, and there was a rear passenger vent window put in. So this long version is one of the older models uh, before 1976. Um, we also have the windscreen wipers at the top. And um, in 1975, these windscreen wipers moved down to the bottom. So we know that it's no older than 1975 based on that. Um, and then finally, I, I was torn between whether this was a 1973 or 74 model, or maybe somebody can correct me because you know, I, I'm not an expert and I, you know, I didn't check all of my um, sources. So I don't know if uh, what I read was totally true or, or correct, but I'm satisfied that this is either 73 or 74. And um, I, I've seen the blue version in a 74, that same blue color. So I think maybe. And then also, I was looking at the, the mirrors. And when I search for 74 models, I find a lot more of these diagonal bar mirrors with the, with the rectangular, uh, you know, with these square um, mirrors on them. So I think that this is probably a 74, but I'm not totally sure. Um, so <laughs> I just, uh, I, I find it quite interesting. You know, this is something that, that I can do is I can uh, do a lot of research and there's a lot of really cool information online. And I think when you've got a model that's this kind of scale and this detailed, that's, that's part of the fun, right? <laughs> so, um, all right, um, let's have a look again inside. I'm just going to open up again. There's that sticker. Okay. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on this video, but the dashboard itself is pretty accurate. Um, they've got a glass covered um, speedometer and things like that. A lot of gauges um, here, and it's kind of plastic or glass covered. Um, there are eight or nine knobs inside. I think the actual car, the actual FJ40 normal
Will it has said Kupa on this side um, and a little warning about, I'm not sure what the warning is about, but that's quite cool that they've got that in there as well. I think um, I saw on Pap Papa's video that this one actually moves. Yeah, this is quite cool. This actually moves around. It doesn't adjust the, um, the window, but you can wind it around. And I think that's the first time I've seen that on, a, on an FMS car. So very nice. You can see there's a lot of cool, um, you know, logos and emblems, uh, very metallic looking. We have here little locks for the hood. Now don't try to actually lock it because they don't, they're not actually functional, but they look cool. Okay. Tom Lee got a blue one. Yeah, yeah, he wanted this one, I think, and then he got the blue one. Um, <laughs> so, okay, um, let's see, any more comments? Um, I had one and I had a 70, so JD says he, he had a 74 CJ5 snow wheeling in the parking lot was so much fun. Um, all right. I hope FMS comes out with a roll cage and a bikini top. Uh, that would be cool. All right. Um, Let's uh, now turn turn it on. So I'm going to show you the battery. Okay, so this is the same battery that's um, that fits inside the mesh again. And you have to make sure you get the right size. So it needs to be, um, from what I remember, it's like 23 millimeters across. And it has to be this size or it won't fit in. This is an XT60 type of adapter, XT60. You're going to need to buy your battery separately. So make sure you get one in advance. Um, big delay on highway patrol, Robert. I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, sorry about that. I hope it comes soon too, Robert. Um, all right, let's get this open. I've got stickers here. Do I have to, what can I? Okay, here we go. Get my nail under there. Okay, and one on this side. So let's have a look inside. I think this is slightly different from the Mashigan. Um, so, so this one has the power button on the right-hand side and the servo on the left-hand side. Um, and I think Mashigan, it was the other way around. Here's the battery tray. I'm not sure if you can see, but you can see here that it's, it's quite thin and it has this hard um, bar to block it on this side. And this is what keeps it in. So you can't take this part off to fit a bigger battery. Um, <clears throat> so let's plug it in. There you go. And I'm just going to slide it in there. And it is a nice, comfortable fit once you've got the, the right battery. It's hard to do from this angle. <clears throat> OK. And let's hope this light turns on. There we go. So these lights are set. There's no um, different functions for them, which means that the, you know, the indicators, emergency lights, they don't work. Um, but but I think that a lot of people will be happy that they're not blinking all the time. Um, I know that annoys some people. So this is uh, yeah, nice standard light. I'm not sure if there's a low beam, high beam on it, um, but I didn't see anything about that in the instructions when I looked earlier. Um, yeah, uh, Quinn, um, I think you said you want to compare with the mesh again. Uh, we will do that, and I can probably do that about now. Um, but just a minute, let me go through this control, this uh, transmitter for you. OK, so let's see what Channel 4 does. Nothing that I know of. OK, now you have to be careful when it's on a table like this, because it will just suddenly um, oh, I didn't put the batteries in here. So just a minute. Um, okay. Fingers crossed these batteries work. Turn it on. Okay, there we go. That seems to work. Mm -hmm. 
and then this one slides into place and I'm not doing it very well. Is it the right way? I think it's the right way. It's the other way. I think I just had it the wrong way around. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just to wake you up a little bit. Um, all right, there we go. So it's working. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to show you um, the modulation on this. I'm pressing the, the trigger. This is kind of the slowest it will go. Okay. It's on 3D. <laughs> Okay, so it goes pretty nice and fast. It has, it does have lots of top. Okay, um, reverse. Okay, um, I would say that you have to press down a little while before it actually starts rolling. And I'd say it's a little bit jumpy, a little bit jumpy as you can see, as you guys all jumped when I slightly pressed the trigger and it lurched forward. Um, so let's see the steering angle on this. Okay. That's not as much as it can go. Let me see if I can get that up. I saw on Tom Lee's video that he did this. Is this right? Okay, let me hold this one. No, that's not working. Oh, I've got the wrong. Okay, here we go. Okay, pretty cool. Throttle trim. Let's turn that down a little bit. Okay. Okay, and so we can see the steering trim here is, is quite um, quite good once you adjust it. Um, okay. All right, and you can see here there's no indicators or anything like that. <laughs> All right, um, Hummel's Hobby. I paid a ton of money at Disney for that kind of 3D effect. I get it free here at Fair RC. This is... You know, which we aim to please, we do. Um, all right, let's have a quick look at the mash again. Our mash again, a little bit cheaper. I'd say it's a little bit smaller. You can see this is higher. It's higher by, even uh, not including this roof rack, it's higher by about two or three centimeters. Um, the actual wheelbase should be exactly the same. The length is exactly the same yeah i'd say just a little bit higher on top yeah cool um okay so pretty cool um the yeah the inside if we look inside here um you can see what i mean there's in this one the the servo is on is on the sorry the power button is on the left and here the power button is on the right uh, so slight difference, um, but I think that everything else is exactly the same. The the wheels and tires are the same as the Mashigan. Okay, the wheels themselves, the tires themselves are really nice, um, and yeah, very quite soft um, and and have good aggressive tread on them. So they're pretty pretty nice for ready to run cars, and then inside uh, down at the bottom um, FMS is quite clear that the um, the body is officially licensed or authorized by a Toyota but the chassis itself um, is not you know so it's not identical to a Toyota car um, it's uh, one of FMS's standard or rock hobby FMS standard chassis okay now the axles themselves look pretty much identical all right. <laughs> I'd better turn this off now. There we go. Okay, this uh, hood is, is very nice and firm, actually. Feels very solid. There you go, snap shut. And, um, and the doors are all really nice and solid as well. All right. So this one is 300 and... Uh, forty nine ninety nine, and um, it's available in two colors. Let me now show you the other color. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay. There you go. So here we've got the um, the mirrors attached as well, and we've also got uh, the license plate, a California license plate on the back. Um, which one do you prefer, guys? Which one do you like? For me, I think they're both they're both equally good. Yeah. Normally, I would tell you my favorite color. For these ones, I think they're both equally nice. I've seen this blue version before in a real car. So I guess this one might be my favorite. Um, yeah, what do you think? Blue is magic. I like yellow, blue, 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 yellow, blue. Looks like blue is a, is a more popular one for you guys. Um, and I, I have to say, I probably agree with you just based on the fact that I've seen a real car, a uh, real FJ40 in this color before. Okay. Um, I like the pink one. <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. If you like the pink colors, that uh, you know, we had a pink uh, power wagon. Here we go. This is one of our first mods, the bad baby. And uh, yeah, this is quite nice. Uh, if you like pink, or you're looking to buy a present for somebody uh, who likes pink, then that is uh, something to watch out for in the future. Uh, we have some really cool pink mods coming up. Sorry? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. It's a lot of stuff to, to sort out. The actual motor is, um, is 35T, uh, 550 uh, motor, I, I believe, and it's the same one that's uh, used in the mesh again. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Um, I, if it were me, I maybe want to upgrade uh, things like the the ESC. The, uh, so I'm looking at the computer, but you're over here, guys. The ESC, the um, the the wheels, the suspension. Uh, I might want to look at upgrading. And the cool thing is that there are upgrades available uh, for you know for this car, and you can get this car performing really well for for what it is, which is a, a really beautiful scale car, which is you know of course a lot heavier than a performance-based car. It's a lot more top-heavy, it's, it's quite high, um, but at the same time, it looks awesome and you can get it to perform pretty, pretty well. Okay, um, did we mention turning the steering wheel? I did not, but uh, sorry, yes, the steering wheel is connected by servo, uh, as with a lot of FMS cars. So when you steer, the steering wheel actually turns left and right as well, which is great if you wanna stick some action figures in there and get them holding the wheel. It has a really nice look to it. Um, okay, just waiting for FMS to start adding oil field shocks. That would be pretty good. I, I would like to see some. You know, it's, it's okay. They they want to start. Uh, they want to use the same chassis or you know have some of the same parts um, as previous cars. That makes business sense. Um, but I would also love to see just a few small improvements here and there on their chassis. Um, but I, I think that. Uh, FMS won't let us down over the next year. You might see some cool stuff coming out from them in terms of performance. Um, all right. Does Ferrari carry 110 FuryTech? We are ordering some now, Papa. Um, we're ordering so, uh, the Python ESCs that have just come out. Um, so that should be available in our store quite soon. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think they, they would work quite well. We might try and and see if we can get it working together with some of the 110 scale cars that we've got. Um, so we can, yeah, uh, we can see how that affects the performance. And I think it would have a really good effect on it. <clears throat> okay. We need a Volkswagen bus with surfboards, Joe. That's a cool idea. Yeah, surfboards is like, um, you just gotta get, you've gotta make, a lot of them if you want you know and you know you probably have 110 scale surfboards but we don't have a lot of the smaller ones and you know most of our cars are 118 scale so it's a little bit tricky to to get all these accessories that are suitable for the smaller scale cars um all right i just want to mention now for anybody who's uh, tuned in that we've got a link at the top of the chat box for a um, mystery box for airplanes okay so there are two things that you can buy um, it's a mystery box, which is $109.99, and we have another mystery box for $189.99. And uh, you get, a, you get a, 
random, randomly selected airplane. You can't choose, um, and it will be uh, worth a lot more than what you paid for. Um, so this is a great thing. If you don't mind what airplane you're getting, um, this is a great opportunity to get something cool and maybe something a bit different that you wouldn't have actually ordered but might still like. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's go on. And uh, let me show you a new product that's recently come out from FMS. Now, I'm not going to go into this box. Like I said, I'm not an expert. And to be honest, I don't really want to just mess up the whole box just to show you some of the parts. Um, but I am going to show you the box itself. You can see the size of it. It's pretty pretty big, but not the biggest. It's, um, this is the Futura from FMS. They have already released uh, an 80 millimeter Futura. Um, here's my uh, knife. Okay, but this one is a 64 millimeter Futura. It's a little bit smaller than before. So this is a great kind of more portable option for, you, for people maybe with a smaller airfield um, or just not able to handle such big planes like the 80 millimeter. And of course, the price is, uh, is nice as well. Um, can we get the price for the future? This is 189.99. And how much is the 80 millimeter future that we've got? Three. Nine, nine. So this is a lot cheaper than the 80 millimeter. Let me open it your way. Okay, Futura Sports Jet, 46 millimeters. This is available in green, yellow, and red. And we've got a really, really nice um, video of that on our channel. Um, yeah, it's an official FMS video where they've um, taken all three of them out along with a drone and there's some really nice footage of that. So you can check that out. Um, it says here, powerful, stable, and rigid. Rigid, they mean strong and durable, EPO foam. Um, all right. You can see here the yellow version. Very cool. And... Over here, you see the three different color versions, yellow, red, and green. Which one do you like, guys? For me, I might go, uh, we've, we've had the green one, and we've got the green 80 millimeter, and I think that looks beautiful, really nice. Um, but because we've had that before, I think the next one that I would choose is the yellow one. I haven't seen this one um, before, so this would be new for me. <clears throat> really hoping for some more CR24 metal upgrades like links. Thanks for sharing that. We might, you know, we'll pass on the, the feedback to Hobby Plus. Um, are these good for beginners? I would say not really beginner planes. Um, you don't get such awesome planes when you're a beginner. <laughs> um, this is a really, really beautiful, fast sports jet. Um, it will be hard to handle for a beginner. Um, I would suggest for any beginners, you want to get some flight simulation software. Um, first of all, so you can practice without damaging anything. And then you want to go for some of the really like, um, you know, like the, the planes that have floats on them and things like that. Um, you might look for some planes that have um, reflex. Um, reflex helps to keep the plane stable uh, when you're flying. So it kind of balances out any, uh, any mistakes, which is uh, really beginner friendly. Um, yeah, like a cub. Um, and then we also have a new plane from uh, which doesn't have reflex, but is still very uh, nice and easy to use, which is um, our um, our Blue Jay. We had um, we had a video from that uh, from Honeywood Hobby this week, um, unboxing and showing that in action, and it looks super nice, um, really really easy to use. But maybe that would be like your second plane rather than your first one. Um, so just keep it in mind, these planes are expensive and they're easy to break if you're a beginner and you, you know, anything can go wrong. So, um, so I would suggest you get something a little bit cheaper to start off with. Okay, this plane is not ready to fly. This plane is a PNP, uh, with plug and play. So uh, you need your own transmitter and battery to go in with this. Apart from that, it's all uh, kind of ready. 
Uh, we, yeah, I'm not going to open it and show you all of the parts, but um, it's quite easy to build. And I believe that you can build it without any glue, which is also really nice. Um, the nose comes off, um, which helps uh, in case of crashing. You know, if it crashes, the nose will just come off instead of damaging the rest of the plane, which is which is very cool. Um, it has very good landing gear, which has a kind of uh, bounce to it. It has a suspension, um, so it um, uh, it kind of uh, yeah it helps to absorb any impact on the ground, which is very good. And it also goes in reverse when not in flying mode, but when you're driving it on the on the uh, runway, um, you can actually reverse the plane and turn around, which is very very unusual. Uh, we don't have a lot of planes like that, and it's a really nice fun uh, feature. This is also a licensed plane from Tomahawk. Um, so um, yeah, if you're looking for something scale, something um, you know that's that's got that really nice look to it, this is a cool one. Okay, so this one is one that you might kind of look forward to if you're a beginner. I think it's kind of like you look at these planes that are um, you know that you just can't fly at the moment as a kind of goal. You just see them as that's your reward for if you can really get into it and and learn how to fly well. So, yeah, I won't show you too much more of that one, um, but very nice plane from Futura. All right, we also have two mods to show you today. Um, so, um, once again, uh, so let me just quickly go through the comments. Um, Robert Wolf says, the Blue Jay looked big, but good for more of a beginner flyer. Yes, it is big. It's, it's a big plane, and it's uh, quite beginner friendly. It doesn't have reflex. Um, so that's something you might want to add to it. Um, but uh, the feedback that we got from Honeywood Hobby was that, and he's quite new to flying as well, um, was that it's it's really forgiving. It performs well at low speed. Um, so yeah, so it's very easy to control in low speed, uh, which is great for beginners. Um, and, but it also can go fast. Uh, the Blue Jay is a really awesome um, plane at a very good price, and the Blue Jay is um, is ready to fly. So that means it comes with the transmitter and the battery. It comes with everything you need to just open the box and get going, which is a really, really nice thing for beginners. Um, okay, so let's, can't you unbox the Futura? I can, but I just think I can't, okay. <laughs> I just don't really want to mess it all up. And, um, and then, you know, cause I can't, I don't have a whole lot I can say about it cause I'm not, I'm not expert enough. Um, Okay, and now I can't actually get them. There we go. Okay, I'll show you the parts and I'll try to explain what they are. And I and I should start learning how to fly these things because I think it will be really cool if we can add a bit more about that on our channel. Oh, so this is the red one. This is the red one. Come to the manual nicely tucked away inside. Um, we have these foam bits that need to be cut open to take anything out. So it's really tightly packed. Um, rarely anything goes wrong in shipping. So let's open it up. This is for, who is it? Um, Seth. This is for Seth. Um, hope it satisfies you. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, if you're interested in, in planes like this, we will be um, getting them out to different YouTubers and, and promoting their videos on our Facebook channel and, and on our website. Um, okay, so we have here the two wings. Okay, these have the, um, these controllers on here to control the servers to control the, the flaps. They plug in just here. And so you need to plug these in to get your, your flaps working. And here we go. Here's the fuselage. And I believe there's a pole. I don't know what that pole's called, actually. Um, but it slides through the fuselage so that you can attach the wings just here. You can see this here. And the cockpit opens up, is it? Stuck down. 
Um, oh, I need to, you need to release the latch here to open it up. That's quite nice. And then it has straps to hold everything down. Um, and this one also takes a 60, an XT60 battery. Um, and I get the size of the battery that's required. I think it's a 2S. Here the tail. Okay. And then here we have um, this spring here. Ah, so here we can see the wheels bending to absorb the impact when it lands, which is very cool. Okay, uh, recommended battery is the uh, 2S. Um, oh, sorry. Is the two, it doesn't say 2S, it says uh, yeah, 2200 milliamp uh, battery. Um, the nose, just switch this one here. Mini RC says it just clicked. FMS makes foam planes, so they are big foam producer, hence why we have nice foam boxes for our crawlers. That's right. Yeah. And also the planes, they need to ship in really good condition you know, because they could be damaged in shipping otherwise. So the boxes have to be super strong. So they put some investment into that. And that's why you get such nice foam boxes with the RC Pass. 4S battery. Um, you just blew my mind. It's all clear now. <laughs> I think I've explained this a couple of times in the live stream, but I understand if you guys don't listen to me, it's fine. <laughs> um, so, okay, there we go. So that's as much as I can show you, I'm afraid. And uh, yeah, now we've taken it out of the box. Here's Honeywood Hobby. And um, yeah, Honeywood Hobby has been making some, uh, has just started making some really awesome plane unboxings and things like that. Um, we'll probably send him some stuff. I don't know if you're ready yet for a future. Um, let us know if you feel confident enough for one of those. We might send you one. Um, okay. And... Joe, I try to listen to you always, <laughs> as long as you're trying. That's that's the main thing. Um, thank you, Robert. Okay, so <laughs> um, let's go on. Best mini plane? Best mini plane? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe the T28 is pretty cool. T28, um, the Fair RC with FMS. Um, it's yellow. It looks it looks really gorgeous. It's it's quite small. Um, I'm not sure if that's mini enough, but it's one of the smaller ones we do. Um, all right, so let's go on. We've got the last thing to show you. We've got two mods. So our mods are, um, we sell repainted and re uh, sometimes have um, you know new parts added to original cars from FMS and other brands such as Hobby Plus, um, and we'll have more and more in the future. Oh, we just had a little teaser there of uh, what we're going to show you. Um, did anybody see it? <clears throat> All right, so recently we've had a, a new FMS Land Rover 112 scale. Um, and it's a really nice car. I see if I've got one here. This gorgeous one. This one also comes with a single cab um, and also a station wagon top. And... Uh, these are very, very scale things, and uh, they, yeah, they, they're, they're made more for appearance rather than uh, performance. They're not really crawlers, but nice scalers, and they definitely catch the eye if you take one out. Um, you know, people are, are really curious to know what, uh, what it is that you're driving, and, uh, we, you know, a lot of people would like to have a look at these. Um, these are currently for, uh, on our shop. Uh, in three different colors, green, yellow, and blue. And the price is a very good price um, for $199.99. Um, however, sometimes people look at these and feel that they are a little bit too clean, too, uh, you know, they look a little bit like uh, a bit plasticky, although, you know, new cars do have this look. Um, but a lot of the time, older cars are not quite as clean and beautiful as this. Um, and if you're looking for something a little bit more realistic, I've got something special to show you. <laughs> there we go. It just come out of my hand. 
Look at this. Just look at it. Okay, I'm going to hide my face so it can focus. Okay. Look at the wheels. This uh, we haven't we haven't done wheels quite as good as these before. These are just awesome. You can see we add a lot of uh, weathering, um, mud and rust effect all over the car. We do the inside and the outside. And this one looks like it's you know been on a journey through Africa. You can see been on a 50 year journey through Africa, I'd imagine. You can see that the grill is even dented. Um, <laughs> we broke your car, I'm sorry, and we will charge you money for that. <laughs> but but looks cool, right? Um, okay, so um, this one, a lot of people would like to do this kind of work themselves. But if you're not in into like your painting, but you still want to have that awesome look, and you know, or maybe you're just not confident enough to do it yourself. Um, this is a great choice. So getting muddy on, on my fingers. Some of the mud does come off. Um, yeah. Now selling used and muddy RCs. Um, yeah, you can check out our um, our banner for this one coming out soon. Um, and it's a really cool banner, which is done in a style of a kind of classified ad for a used car. Um, and but yeah yeah it's it's nice right okay so yeah the dented grill just adds that final touch to it um, really nice the engine inside <laughs> the motor is all brand new and shiny but um, that's maybe that will come later <laughs> so we have yeah rusted uh, dashboard as well you can see the rust detail on the dashboard and even on the wheel Okay, you need some holes in that fabric seating, I think. Drop it again, and you can add some more dings and dents. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, that's that's our Land Rover rusted mod. And do we have a price for this yet? Two four nine. It's going to be two hundred and forty nine ninety nine. So we're adding. Um, an extra 50 for, for this um, extra detail that we're putting on. Um, this takes this is all done by hand and it takes a lot of work. It's uh, somebody's, uh, you know, there's somebody actually sat there working on this all day. Um, they need to get paid. So <laughs> we add that extra price. Um, and okay, we need a scale version of Joe for the driver. I don't think that would be very popular. People might say there's a defect or something. Um, <laughs> that's an awesome weathering job. Hello, RC Jono. RC Jono also makes really awesome trail videos and uh, has made some for our channel. Um, so yeah, check out RC Jono's stuff. Um, he's also always driving some new and cool cars. Um, all right, let me show you one more. Uh, quickly, and we have the old version, I mean the original, not here. Okay, so you guys probably, oh yeah, let me quickly show you the cabs for this one. Okay, so this is the single cab, and it's also um, rusted, has this rusted effect. Okay, um, the price for this, so let me just move out the way a little bit. The price for this is... Um, is higher than other rusted cars because we also do the interior. So it, it does take a lot more work. Um, and here is the station wagon top. So we actually do, we rust both of the, um, the optional roofs that you can get. And yeah, I haven't put it in. I'd like to buy a little Joe. You can buy me, it's fine. If you've got, if you've, if you want me, <laughs> <laughs> just send the money our way. Um, okay, <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> and let's just put that there to, because I think it would be nice to put it together. But you guys have seen our FJ45, right? We showed you the FJ40 today. You've seen our 112 FJ45, most of you. 
Um, and so we've also been doing a bit of work on that. Recently, FMS came out with three, uh, with two new colors. Is it two or three? There was a red and the yellow and the blue and the green. The green was the original color. So I think it's three colors now. And we took the yellow one and we've also done our rusting job on it. So have a look at this guy. Okay. This one doesn't have the same uh, paint job on the wheels as this one does, which is so awesome. But it still looks pretty cool, right? And this yellow comes out really well with the rusted patina effect. If you're looking for something to do a kind of scale farm run, you're going to want something that looks a bit more like this rather than uh, the brand new one. OK. So the roof, see the details on that. You see the bed. OK, very, very nice. This one's also open, I think. You can't yeah. get it open. The door's open on this, I think. I think you need a key, though, to open it. Normally, this comes with a little key, so it might be harder for me to get open. And I'm really worried about breaking it. So I'm not going to open, but I'm just going to hazard a guess that it's also rusted inside. Yeah, I can see the seats have a, a muddy look to them. Yeah, so it's also rusted on the inside as well. Um, very, very cool. You're still talking about me. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> isn't a dirty, dirty Joe a drink? Don't drink that. That sounds disgusting. Um, that's so cool that it comes with the different tops. It is cool. Yeah, it's nice that it has that option. Uh, I personally like it open, actually, just like that. But it's nice to have those single cab and station wagon tops. Um, that Toyota pickup in the back, a new paint as well. Toyota pickup. Ah, we have a couple of these Toyota Helixes. This is one that I really want us to release because it looks so awesome. I think we will do one day. There might be some newer version coming out, something like this, but um, maybe an upgraded RC. <clears throat> so this one is awesome. And yeah, it normally it, it actually originally came with KC lights um, here a light bar across here. I think it's broken now. And we also have this green rusted job with a red bed, which is very cool. This is also a Helix or Hilux. OK. And I think that's it, guys. I think we've come to the end of the show. And I am done. Yeah, I've, I've gone over the hour mark, so I get my full pay. Um, so yeah, I'm finished now. <laughs> See you later. Um, we have our um, we have remember at the top of the chat box we have a secure link for people who are interested in buying RC airplanes. Um, 109.99 and 189.99 it gets you um, a randomly selected um, RC airplane from FMS, um, which is. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's something that will be a lot uh, worth a lot more than what you pay for. Um, you won't be able to choose it and you won't be able to return it. Um, but it's a really good deal for somebody looking for something random. OK, um, let's have a quick look through the comments before we finish for today. Um, who's going to buy a mystery plane? Good question. Um, is that light bar available for purchase that's on the Helix? Um, this one is, um, I don't think it's available for purchase. Uh, we're still working on it, but we might make it available later. Uh, release the white one, right? I'm still not sure if it's Helix or Hilux. Um, you see these words written down more than you hear them, you know, so <laughs> I'm still not sure. Um, okay, great job, Joe. I know we don't make it easy on you, Lowell. Um Bye, Joe. See you all next week. Hopefully, I really hope that your patrol car shows up. Um, yeah, sorry about the delay. 
Um, drones and planes not allowed in Silicon Valley. Oh, that's a shame. Um, okay, and I think that's about it. Um, all right, thank you very much, guys, for joining, and see you next time. Bye-bye.